Hey, thanks a lot. It's so awesome to be home and to be at TechCrunch Disrupt at the same time. Fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, well, I thought we'd start off with something really casual. So, what is going on with the music industry? Do you see that the total euros earned is going to shrink because of technology, or is it just shifting? Um, I think it's. I think it's just shifting. I think that um, basically, if you kind of if you zoom out a little bit and you think about um, music in general, um, music and audio. It's something that it's unique in that it's relevant for every single person on the entire world. Um, very few products are, you know, something that's interesting for everybody in the entire world. So it's always going to be something really significant for uh, for humans. Then what happens is that the the industry and sort of the economics and the markets around it will just shift over time. Um, and I think. Like right now, we're in a period of redefining, you know, what different elements make up sort of the music industry and the music music markets, and I think that people are maybe, you know, looking a little bit too narrowly about um, which dollars are kind of or which euros are seen as being part of the music industry. Well, you guys as SoundCloud are in a pretty good space. You just hit a really big milestone, right? Uh, yeah, which one do you want to talk about? <laughs> uh, let's, let's, let's talk about your growth first. Yeah, uh, so I mean, we're uh, yeah, we, we've we've had a really good year. Like we've been been growing very fast. And we're lucky to really kind of um, really kind of be this like the defining audio platform of of the web now. I mean, we're reaching over over a quarter billion uh, people every single month. Um, uh, so you're up to a quarter billion. You're at 200 million not too long ago. Yeah, um, so it's like 250 million people reached across the across the entire world as well. I think that's that's kind of cool. It's like um, like in a given hour, we'll reach almost every single country in the entire world. Um, actually, space as well. Like the first sound in space was like recorded and shared on SoundCloud, which is pretty <laughs> neat. Um, and and yeah, people are uploading over 12 hours of audio every single minute. So it's like um, yeah, pretty crazy scale actually. So the thing is, you know, back in the day, being a musician meant writing music. Yeah. But nowadays, you have to do everything. You know, you have to be a merchandise product designer. You have to be a photographer now. You have to be a community manager, a viral marketer. Like, it, yeah. wh what does that mean for being an artist? Is is music as pure as it used to be? Um, I, I well. I think it depends. Like you don't necessarily have to do all of those those things today. Um, I, you still see artists that are much more kind of introverted, much more reclusive, and then you know they have sort of people around them helping out with more of the, the sort of outward facing stuff. So I think that there's there's different models for different artists, but um, I think to a certain degree, you know, it's it's kind of always been like that. That um, if you go back and Look at some sort of great artist. It's not that they were, you know, um, these complete like recluse introverts. Like they're usually fairly um, outward-facing, charismatic people. Um, so I think that just translates into into different behaviors today. And I think the the one for the ones where it worked really well is where they're not forcing it, where they're just doing it naturally, where they kind of they they live on um, on SoundCloud and on. Uh, Twitter and on on Tumblr very naturally, and it just sort of brings this feeling of authenticity to them. Um. Cool. So you launched, you relaunched your premium subscription options back in March. You know, you, normally you get two hours of music uploads, uh, but now with with these accounts, you can get for three euros a month, you get four hours of uploads, and for nine euros, you get unlimited uploads. Yep. How have those been selling? Uh, they've been selling well. <laughs> I mean, like, well, as in, as well as you had hoped, better than you hoped. They're 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 actually pretty pretty much like exactly on our forecast um, at, as what we'd expected. I think the the big thing when we made that change was that we went from four different account levels with a fairly wide range of pricing um, to two levels with a much um, a smaller range of pricing. So the the primary reason for um, for making that change was that we saw that we could simplify the accounts, make them cheaper and more accessible, yet still hit the, the previous forecast that we had. So you're, you're making as much money, but it's just easier and, and less complicated. Yeah, so it works like it works the same way for us um, as, as we forecasted revenue wise, but we have a much more accessible product um, and a much more simpler product. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about your competitors right now, or at least other companies in the music space. I know everyone likes to say they don't pay any attention to their competitors. We're just straight laser focused on our own thing. But 
honestly, like, what do you think of iTunes? And you know, if you could change something about that product, what would you change? Uh, we actually don't like to look at competitors. We're just laser focused <laughs> on our own things. Um, no, I'm not going to let you get away with that. <laughs> um, no, but I, I think that there's. Um, so I think one thing that's maybe a little bit different for us is that um, we we look a lot at what other companies in kind of adjacent spaces are doing, but we really honestly feel that there's not a direct competitor out there. I think, and it was, I think it was quite similar for like for Twitter as well when they were when they were sort of growing up. That there's, if, if you approach it from the perspective of okay. Um, there's different services out there for listening to music and audio, yes, um, but there's no like platform that's that's open in the way that SoundCloud is, where anybody can sign up or anybody can upload, and that reaches the kind of like uh, the scale across the web. So, in and and in that way, we really really are um, are unique. If there's, you know, you talked about there being a slight lack of funding here. Is there something that could be done to fix that? Like, should the, you know, should the German government be stepping in? Should more VCs be moving here? You know, what, what do you think could help make sure that there's enough funding going around? Um, well, I think generally, like the, I, I'm not a big believer in, in sort of the government coming in and um, and funding things. Um, I don't. I'm, I'm sure there are examples where that's worked really well, but but I, I feel like in many cases it doesn't necessarily uh, work that well. Um, there ends up being too much kind of like restrictions and, and too much overhead around it. For um, for other VCs, I think like I think the it, it really comes down to like the startups here. Actually, like it's their responsibility of you know um, showcasing themselves more in the world. Like the like VCs are very simple um, human beings in a way. Like they <laughs> they they want to put you know like one in and let, then get some more than one out. Like they have a very simple sort of operating mind, right? So it to to get. This is to invest more in, in Berlin. Is just to show them that okay, they're going to make a lot of money if they invest here. So, basically, I think it's it's in some ways up to the startups to kind of um, to to show themselves to the world, uh, build some cool shit, and have a lot of impact and show people that it can be done from here.